The Biden administration has a national goal of reaching completely carbon-free electricity by 2035. Achieving that goal will involve transitioning power production, upgrading thousands of miles of transmission, and more. Jonathan Mock is a research fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School's Belfer Center. Jonathan, welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me. So what does it actually mean to have carbon-free electricity? Is it a complete transition to renewables like wind and solar? So there are multiple ways to do it. People often think of just using wind and solar, and that's one way to definitely have carbon-free electricity, but there are other technologies. So nuclear is a very proven carbon-free technology, but it's often more expensive. Um, there are unproven carbon-free technologies, such as putting carbon capture in storage. So you have fossil fuel plants with uh, technology on it that captures the carbon emissions. But generally, it's gonna be some mix of those things and very heavily dependent on wind and solar. You know, going to zero emissions in general means that there's going to be more demand on the electrical grid. Isn't that right? Yes, that's exactly right. Most studies that show um, they're going to zero emissions have a lot more electricity because if you think about it, think of our cars, for instance. So right now, our most cars are powered by gasoline. If all of a sudden everyone's using electric vehicles, there's going to be a huge amount of energy that was not going through the electric system that all of a sudden is. And that's just one example. There's also things like heating. A lot of heating is natural gas. A lot of futures in uh, where we're thinking of a net zero system uh, have electric heating. And that, again, means there's a lot more energy that would need to flow through the electric grid. So then, Jonathan, higher demand for electricity means that new electrical transmission lines will need to be built. What are the estimates for how much we're going to need? Uh, a lot. So some of the estimates say two to three times more transmission. And if you think of how long it's taken us to build the electric grid now, it's going to be trillions of dollars, a couple trillion to do this investment, um, or some of the best estimates, and just a lot of new, tra of new transmission. Small lines, large lines, especially important are these large high voltage transmission lines, which take energy from one part of the country to another part of the country. So it's going to be a big overhaul of the grid that's needed. So what's the likelihood, do you think, of meeting the president's goal of having carbon-free emissions uh, electricity by 2035? So I think it's tough, but it's still doable. But we need to really start now in terms of changing some of the policies. So when people think of meeting this goal, they often think, oh, well, let's just build lots of wind and lots of solar, and that will do it. But actually, the grid is really important. So if you look back in 2020, there was something like 750 gigawatts of uh, capacity for electricity that was being proposed but not yet connected to the grid. That's something like ability to power 80 to 90 million homes. So the grid is becoming a real bottleneck that needs to be paid attention to. So that's the bad news. The good news is the Biden administration and the infrastructure bill really has started to focus on this. Um, so there's something called the Building a Better Grid Initiative in the Department of Energy that was funded by the infrastructure bill that's really starting to try and figure out how to um, basically build a better grid, how to um, for solve these siting issues, how to build uh, plan new transmission. So there is progress that there's promising signs and progress that I think is being made, but it's going to be difficult. So talk about some of the investments then uh, in particular and how to prioritize those investments to get us in that direction of decarbonizing the electrical system. So one uh, major bottleneck and problem with transmission investments right now is it's often the planning of transmission is done pretty much exclusively on a regional and sub-regional level. So there are these different organizations across the country that do transmission planning, but they don't often do um, kind of long distance transmission planning. It's as if we were trying to think of building a highway and uh, or I-95, and instead of doing a five lane highway, we can only build uh, local one lane roads the whole way. And so that makes it a lot more difficult. And again, fortunately, there's signs of kind of the Biden administration trying to figure out how to better coordinate, but that's traditionally been the issue. Um, another problem with the transmission planning and figuring out the investments is that a lot of these transmission planning organizations are pretty much legally uh, prohibited from prioritizing carbon reductions over reliability and costs. And so that's another thing that needs to change. Well, speaking of costs, I wonder what the cost of electricity in a carbon-free system would be. Like, does it become more expensive or less expensive for the consumer? So a lot of studies will show that it could become less expensive. I mean, there's a huge amount of uncertainty. It'll depend on lots of factors. The thing is that there's not one way to do a carbon-free electricity system. There's multiple different ways. And depending on our policies, it can become more or less expensive. So if it's easier to build transmission uh, and cheaper to build transmission, 
will have cheaper net uh, carbon-free electricity. If it becomes harder to build transmission, that could increase the cost and make it more expensive. And so really the policy decisions we make, the way we build the system can dramatically uh, change the costs. All right, well, Jonathan, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for being on the program. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.